Hello, my name is Dan Popescu. I'm an investment analyst specializing in precious metals. Uh, and uh, I uh, have the pleasure today to speak with Nick Barishev, president and CEO of Bullion Management Group. Uh, their website is at uh, bmg-group.com. Uh, they, uh, they specialized in uh, uh, precious metals, uh, gold, silver, and platinum. They have mutual funds, and uh, they also uh, have, have uh, physical bullion bars uh, for clients. Uh, Nick started his uh, business in uh, gold. In, uh, uh, I, I looked on the website, and uh, BMG is uh, uh, registered uh, in 2002. And uh, that corresponds very well with, uh, uh, with uh, the, the, bear, the end of the bear market, the secular bear market in gold, uh, which was around 2000, and uh, gold hit uh, uh, 250, and everybody was predicting that gold will go to zero. Uh, so uh, uh, Nick was a perfect uh, timer for this uh, major secular uh, uh, precious metals, but uh, more specifically gold. Uh, he timed it perfectly, worked on it, and built an, an excellent uh, business uh, in uh, uh, managing and uh, uh, portfolios for clients uh, in precious metals. Hello, Nick. All right, Dan, it's a pleasure to be back. Uh, Nick, uh, can you uh, can you give us a review from last year? We spoke last year and uh, sometime in April about what how you see the the gold market and uh, precious metals in general. Well, first of all, in in terms of going back um, a bit, I actually started the the concept for the company in 1998, and it took me. Uh, four years to get all the approvals from the OSC. So we launched our first bullion fund in 2002. Um, so I don't know whether, you know, they just got tired of me and finally agreed to give us the, uh, we needed six exemptions to uh, launch the fund. And, and the reason I did it, it to me, gold entered in, into a, uh, uh, a sort of a bear market decline in in 1980, and it it continued uh, all the way till about 2002 uh, when it started picking up. So our timing was good, but I you know when I did this, I thought, but it it was inevitable for gold to turn around. It was an extremely long bear market at the time. So, and I remember that. Sticking in silver, I, I bought silver at the time for 250 an ounce. So it was quite a deal back then. Did, did you see at that time uh, the, 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 the problems with, uh, with the global debt, with the international monetary system? Well, it, it was already getting to be a problem, but you know, compared to where we are now, it was like trivial back then. Uh, I mean, you know, that debt was, uh, I think, two or three trillion, and now it's 20 trillion. So, quite a big gap since that time. And, you know, one of the premises in, in my book is that the gold had always been correlated with US, U.S. debt. So, and the, and the correlation was about 95%, and, and that went on until about 2011 when the correlation fell off and the debt continued to rise but gold went down. So it has quite a ways to catch up to get back to the correlation today. It should be already 2,500. So that's that's where that happened and, and a lot of that has been due to the manipulation and you know manipulation has been a conspiracy theory topic for 20 years. But recently that's it's kind of come out of the conspiracy realm because there's been a class action lawsuit launched against all the bullion banks. And when when a judge um, gave 
at class action status. Then Deutsche Bank came to the plaintiffs and right away agreed to pay a hundred million settlement and act as a witness for the plaintiffs against the other banks. So that's the end of the conspiracy theories. Now it's fact. And once that plays through, the manipulations will end because it'll be too expensive. Like Deutsche Bank has tens of thousands of lawsuits on the books right now. So it, it's, it's the kind of thing that uh, they're going to have to rethink their strategy. Yeah, uh, they, the manipulation they, stops, the gold price goes up. Yeah, they, uh, I always found those uh, conspiracy accusations uh, bizarre because we had the, in the 1960s the, the London gold pool and uh, it collapsed. Uh, some people very often ask me that uh, if gold is manipulated, why should I which, why should I buy it? And I give as an example the collapse of the, of the London gold pool, which started this major bull market. Right. Um, well, because it's like keeping a, a balloon underwater. The further under water you push it, the higher it'll pop out once you let go. That's, that's what happens to the manipulation. Sooner or later, uh, it's no longer you know, feasible. And, and where the big part of that change is, is, is the fact that although Western countries are, are not adding to their gold reserves, at least they're not selling, um, China, Russia, and a number of other Eastern countries, India, are, are heavy buyers of gold. And when you compare the Shanghai gold exchange to the COMEX, you find that on the Shanghai exchange, you can't do leveraged naked short selling, which is how the manipulation happens in the West. And, and you have to have physical gold available in order to sell it. And all the trades are settled in physical gold, where on the COMEX 90% of the trades are settled in cash. So as the Shanghai exchange becomes more prevalent, that uh, you know, becomes of greater and greater importance to gold. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, uh, but uh, central banks are, uh, uh, as you mentioned, uh, uh, I'm also surprised that, uh, that uh, Western central banks like uh, uh, Switzerland uh, did not, or the European Union did not go into gold. I have to admit, I, I expected them at one point uh, to, uh, uh, to buy, but for the moment it's mostly what's called uh, developing countries that, uh, that are buying uh, Kazakhstan well, the developing countries and eastern countries, but um, it's also amusing because when when you look at gold reserves holdings, um, Canada has none, Australia has none, New Zealand has none, Netherlands has none, and the UK sold half their gold. Now, coincidentally, these were all allies of the United States in World War II. Why did they all sell their gold? Yeah, <clears throat> you, we've seen we've seen uh, right now uh, some uh, 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 the price of gold trying to to break out uh, from this uh, correction because it looks very much it is a correction, uh, uh, but it, it seems to have a lot of resistance. You think it's due to this kind of manipulation? Well, yeah, you can look it up. You, you know, you get days where suddenly the gold price goes down 25 bucks because in after hours trading, when there is no buyers, somebody naked shorts 20 billion of gold on the comics. What do you think that is? That's not a normal trader. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I want to I want to touch now a little bit because you manage uh, funds uh, uh, not just for uh, individuals also for uh, portfolio managers and uh, uh, how do you see the role uh, I've been educated in Switzerland with uh, 
uh, with the idea, the old traditional, because Switzerland has changed, the, the, the banking system has changed, but the traditional Swiss of holding, uh, putting 20% of your money in gold and pray God you'll never need it. Hey. Uh, how do you see now uh, the allocation? How do you see regulators seeing gold uh, in, in a portfolio? Do, do they see it as dangerous or as... Uh, uh, as part of a so they, safe portion of the Western regulators, financial advisors, wealth management simply doesn't understand it. First of all, everybody agrees that yeah, a portfolio should be diversified. But virtually all the portfolios are 60-40 stocks and bonds. Okay. In total, there's seven asset classes, not two. Stocks, bonds, cash, precious metals, real estate, commodities, and collectibles. Those are the asset classes. So if you want a diversified portfolio, you hold some of everything. Okay? And it depends on how wealthy you are and so on and so forth. But like in, in Europe, um, the high net worth wealth managers, um, you know, if you're interested in exotic cars, they'll go you know, and send a representative to buy you a, a, a Ferrari on the Barrett-Jackson auction. And the Ferraris have done better than the Dow. So you can't dismiss it as an asset class. So number one is, is the portfolio should be as diversified as possible. So collectibles are, you know, not, not normal for the average advisor. Commodities are also, there's no readily available source of physical commodities. All the commodities are proxies and derivatives. So that's uh, like futures contracts. They're not, they're not for everybody. So what you're left with is cash, stocks, bonds, real estate, gold, and in, in what should be a diversified portfolio. When you look at those asset classes since 71, when Nixon uh, you know, removed gold backing from the US dollar, then the asset class that was the top performing asset class the most often was real estate. The second one was gold, then stocks, then bonds, then cash. So, if you had half a brain, why would you not include real estate and gold in your portfolio when everybody believes in diversification? Two best classes and they're not in the portfolios. So we're in the process of creating a proper balanced fund that will include all of that. Yeah. Uh <clears throat> what what do you see uh, uh, right now? What uh, uh, what do you see gold uh, going uh, uh, at this moment? How, what what macro trends that uh, you see affecting uh, the price of gold uh, in in the next few years? Well, there, there's many, but the the most important one, which isn't covered in the mainstream media, is the petrol want. So China announced a few months ago that it was creating a mechanism where it would buy oil in one, and then the one could be exchanged for gold on the Shanghai Gold Exchange. So that's basically an attack on the reserve currency status of the U.S. dollar. Now China is also the biggest importer of oil and also the biggest importer on most other commodities. So I suspect the same thing will happen to other commodities where they'll be, you know, be bypassing the U.S. dollar. So the Petro One methodology for oil was implemented a few weeks ago. And on the first day of trading, 10 billion of oil was sold in one on the first day. So, 
you can imagine what the impact will be of, of different countries selling China oil in one and then converting it to gold. Yeah, could they, uh, they, they could also put pressure on Saudi Arabia to, uh, to abandon the, the, the petrodollar. Right, so that's, that's the one outstanding link that uh, I think sooner or later Saudi is going to drop the, um, the U.S. dollar as the only currency and, said, and will say we'll sell Saudi oil in, in euros, British pounds, won, and dollars. Take your pick. And then the status of the U.S. dollar as reserve currency is over. Could the, uh, could the recent events, uh, uh, we've seen it yesterday and in the, the, the last few days, the, there seems to be a new war between, it's the end of this love affair between Trump and Putin and going into, uh, uh, with a lot of restrictions on Russia, uh, and Russia has been accumulating uh, constantly quite a lot of, uh, of gold uh, official reserves. Uh, and uh, uh, since they are big oil producers, uh, producer today, and they are selling to the Chinese in Yuan, uh, could there be some collaboration between the two uh, in in a reset of the international monetary system? Well, that's that's the ultimate objective. That's that's what was handled in uh, Jim Rickard's book, Currency Wars, and it was mentioned in his latest book that that the the, the numerous countries, particularly China and Russia, uh, are fed up with the, uh, the hegemony of the, of the U.S. dollar. And, and the movement is, is to move to IMF SDRs, which is based on a basket of currencies. So, so regardless, either way, the, the U.S. could lose its... Um, Status as reserve currency. Yeah, I've seen uh, I've seen some data. Uh, I'm I'm following some data, and uh, it seems that now uh, Russia has about uh, uh, at a price of two thousand uh, dollars, two thousand five hundred dollars gold. It will have its uh, its ruble backed by gold. Mm -hmm. Well, and and um, the big question is China because. <clears throat> China buys its gold in the sovereign wealth fund, not in the central bank. And a sovereign wealth fund doesn't report to anybody. So when the Chinese see fit, they can move gold from the sovereign wealth fund to the central bank whenever they want. But they're not going to do that till they finish buying you know, gold. And their intended objective is to get to ten thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, ten thousand tons of gold. And currently, the central bank is is only at sixteen hundred. But the the estimates are that the sovereign wealth fund has six to eight thousand tons already. <laughs> yeah. So they 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 are using gold as a strategic asset uh, in their war against the hegemon. That's right. Nick, uh, let me ask you, because you also, uh, you also have in your funds uh, silver uh, and platinum, uh, I've, uh, I've looked uh, earlier to some uh, correlations. Uh, I, uh, 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 silver is very well correlated, but it's been lagging gold. Uh, uh, how do you see the relation between them? Is silver going to confirm this bull market uh, in gold? Well, both silver and platinum are, are grossly undervalued relative to gold. Uh, like platinum traditionally trades at several hundred dollars more than gold, and now it's several hundred dollars below the price of gold. So it's a lot of catching up to do. And the gold-silver ratio is in the 70s right now. And, you know, really the, the natural ratio is about 16. So there's a big catch-up to do. Unfortunately, what happens is that if we have a financial crisis, 
then it's only gold that goes up first because platinum and silver are considered uh, industrial metals. So they can decline with the markets initially, but once the initial round of the correct correction is over, they should surpass the, the price of, of gold in terms of ratios and performance. Yeah, I, uh, I saw that uh, I, I looked at a chart of uh, gold uh, and platinum and it seems to be uh, much better correlated uh, to gold than to uh, palladium, uh, which is an industrial. So it seems that platinum has gained some, some uh, uh, reserve status, uh, uh, some investment value much more than palladium. Well, because gold, silver, and platinum have histories in different countries of being money. Like platinum was money in Russia for 300 years. Palladium has never been money. It's always been an industrial commodity. How do you see we... Uh, 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 how do you see also... I want to put that in context now with... Uh, with uh, the bubbles that we have recently, and uh, uh, it seems that the stock market continues to uh, to go up, but it broke in the recent weeks. Uh, uh, it seems to uh, volatility has increased uh, uh, enormously in the last uh, month. Uh, yeah. How do you see the relation uh, between uh, the stock market uh, and the different bubbles that we had, Bitcoin bubble, uh, which re resembles the Nasdaq and the dot-com of the 90s. Right. Uh, how do well, you see their... If you examine any of the, the bubbles throughout, you know, recent history, then you'll find when, when the bubbles burst and they decline, the price of gold goes up. So there's a big differential between the losses, you know, in, in, the, in the broad equity markets and the gains in gold at the time. So the issue is if, you know, the buy and hold strategy um, is, is not really a strategy that works ahead of a market crash. Buy and hold strategy works in, in kind of normal markets. But if we're going to have a 50 to a 70 percent crash, you want to be out of the market well in advance of that. So, for example, in 1999, the darling tech stocks were Microsoft, IBM, Cisco, Intel, and Oracle. Okay, they were all super high flyers. In 2000, when the market tanked, they tanked between 58 to 83 percent. Okay. Two of them broke even in 2014. Three of them haven't yet broken even. So this buy and hold might be okay for institutions, but you won't live long enough to break even, particularly on an inflation-adjusted basis. 1929 took until 1952 to break even without inflation, and 1984 on an inflation-adjusted basis. Buy and hold doesn't work under those conditions. Yeah, I, I, uh, you remind me of, uh, of a chart I follow uh, regularly, which is the Dow Jones priced in gold. Right. And it has never uh, even come close to the top of, uh, of 2000. Yeah. Uh, it... That's right. So, so the, all, all these indicators are flashing red. And, you know, relative to the gains that you might get in the markets from here till, say, the fall or even next year are going to be relatively minor compared to the, your risking, you know, your entire portfolio. Do, do you get a feel uh, that uh, uh, I, I get two feelings? One, that because I lived uh, uh, as you, I think you, you, you went through that. Uh, 1965 to 1971, just before the collapse of right. the 
and uh, I didn't live through it, but for my father and for people uh, about the problems of the 1929, can you comment about those two uh, periods and gold? Well, it, it just said, you know, in most of that generation never recovered from the depression and, and the 29 bubble because uh, it was so devastating and the same thing is going to happen. And like I say, people are depending, you know, on their retirements with unfunded pensions, on their houses that are, you know, going to be sold and downsized, and all that's not going to work. And, and the RSPs and pension plans are going to get devastated. So yeah, I, they need to make some drastic moves to survive this. Uh, the last thing that I want to uh, to ask you because I uh, I just went through your book again and uh, 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 Gold Ten Thousand and uh, you mention in the book uh, uh, regularly and I think many people make a mistake not considering especially in North America that uh, uh, gold is cash it's hard cash That's right. and uh, it, it shouldn't be. It's, it's everything that will go down. It's not gold uh, that will go up. Right. Well, on a global basis, there's about 300 trillion in financial assets. That's stocks, bonds, and mortgages, like paper assets. Doesn't include real estate. The total above ground gold is about 8 trillion. But out of the 8 trillion, only about 1.8 trillion is what I would call investment grade bullion. And what is not known is how much of that bullion is held by the world's wealthiest families like the Rothschilds, Rockefellers, the Saudi kings and so on. But let's say the entire 1.8 was available. Now my supply is going down and hasn't been discovered for a number of years. So if the gold price was to spike dramatically, the only thing that you can adjust is the price. Okay. Now in 1960, institutional and personal portfolios held an average of five cents in gold. Today it's a half a percent. So if we have a crash and we simply have a move from a half a percent to five percent, we get ten thousand dollar gold. That's if the entire one point eight trillion was available. If only half of it is available, you get twenty thousand dollar gold. Uh, that's uh, interesting. That's from uh, your title of the of the book, which is still uh, uh, still actual. <laughs> And also, if we compare the, I look at the data on basis with, uh, with money supply, uh, and it comes uh, again around ten thousand dollars. That's right. Yeah. 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 Well, in Rickard's um, in his latest book, uh, he talks about ten thousand as being the downside number, and that the other side is like fifty thousand. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, it's it's all the time I have, but it's always a pleasure to, to you. You have so much knowledge uh, concerning the gold market. Uh, you've been through it uh, through the entire period. So, uh, and uh, I I had the chance to uh, be in the field to follow everybody, uh, and uh, I'm always you know, I'm very impressed about uh, about your group and uh, the way you uh, you build it. So. Uh, you also have a newsletter uh, on on the website that people uh, I think can subscribe to it. Yeah, it's a it's a free new newsletter called the Bullion Buzz, and they can just subscribe to it on our website. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ng-group.com. Is that correct? That's that's right. Okay. So they can they can follow you. Uh, you give. Uh, Comments and and, and advice. You made some presentations recently, and uh, uh, I found them very very interesting and very 
very know, knowledgeable about uh, the gold, uh, the gold market, and the, the uh, precious metals in general. Thank you, Nick, for uh, for, for taking the time. To, uh, to My pleasure again. Take care. Take care.